After a long search, Luke and Professor Layton finally gain access to the tower. Inside, they learn the truth behind the village of St. Mysterie and Ramon's abduction. Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Professor Layton and the Curious Village. In the last episode, we finally made our way to the Mysterious Tower. But more importantly, we finished all the mini-games! Yay! In this episode, there are no more distractions that are going to be stopping us from climbing the tower. That is all we have left to do in this game. Once we do that, the mystery of the Golden Apple will be solved. Let's go. I can't even believe it's the final stretch already. It just went by so stinking fast. I know this is the shortest late game out of the bunch, but still, it's just amazing how quickly this went. Ah, oh, not another locked door. Whoever built this tower must enjoy watching people suffer. Well, my boy, are you just going to stand there and complain about it? No. Leave this puzzle to me. Puzzle number 95, a magic square. You need to solve this magic square in order to proceed. A magic square is a set of numbers organized in a square so that adding any strain of three numbers be the be they horizontal, vertical, or diagonal, results in the same total. One and two have already been placed on the square for you. Complete the rest of the square to look to open the lock. Hint number one. If you have the patience to experiment with all seven numbers, you'll run across the right answer eventually. On the other hand, not everyone has the patience to do that. Hey, anyway, that's me! So here's a hint. The number five goes in the center space. Hint number two. Still having trouble? Alright then, here's a big hint for you. The sum of each horizontal, vertical, and diagonal pillar- Oh god. PILLAR IS NOW BANNED FROM THIS household. Is 15. Hint number three. You know that the number five goes in the center space. You must also know that the sum of each string of numbers is 15. 15 minus 5 is 10, so each pair of the numbers that surrounds 5 should add up to 10. Pair 1 with 9, 2 to 8, and so forth. Follow this principle as the as you arrange the numbers, and your answer is yours. The answers are yours and yours alone! Now, go ahead and do that, and put this one here, this one here, this one here, this here, this here, and this here. Excellent! Any three numbers aligned or something? We got it, we get it, we get it. Wait, something about China? Uh, the earliest record of a magic square dates back to 650 BC in ancient China. Okay then, that's a little interesting history tip. I got it! The door's open now. A uh, good show, Luke. <laughs> I was like, oh uh, yeah, good show. So what was it that you were asking me earlier? I'm all ears now. I just realized how big Layton's ears are. I never really saw them until just now. It's kind of funny when he says, I'm all ears. I wanted to show you what- I wanted to know when Don Paolo snuck his way into the village. It seems like he followed us here. The only way into St. Mysterio is through the drawbridge. Plus, I doubt Franco would let the, in such an obviously evil character as Don Paolo. Yes, to be honest, I still haven't quite figured out how Don Paolo entered St. Mysterio myself. But it seems that after he made his way in, he tried to stay at the Beatrice's Inn. Oh, so that's the man who skipped out on his bill. It figures it was- it figures it was Don Paolo. So what weasel did- so that weasel did himself in up- My god, I can't read! So that weasel did himself up to look like Inspector Chelmy, then into the mansion and... Hold on, when did he kill Simon? We'll get to that in a moment. We must keep climbing. Come along. Alright, just spacing out the mysteries, I guess. Alright, I get it. That's the only hint coin on this floor, according to the guide. Let's keep on going. And hey, we remember you. Ah, konnichiwa, amigos. I'm so glad to see other people. I've been wandering this place forever. This guy's probably really racist. I don't know. Hey, how did you get in here? There's no way you solved all those puzzles. Je ne sais pas. It just happened. A moment. I'm wandering the sewers. The next thing I know, I'm here. I take this as in the local hotspot my guidebook promised it would be. How curious. So where is it that you'd like to go? If you could go down these stairs, you could return to the village proper. Just make sure you don't fall onto the large hole by the entrance. 
Oh, Zia, Zia, that should be enough for information to get out of me out of there. May I ask you one favor? All this talk of stairs has reminded me of a Nazo I know. Answer it for me, por favor. A Nazo? Alright, different language for puzzle, I guess. Puzzle number 96, take the stairs. It's a reverse 69. You have business on the 8th floor of a 10-story building. It took you 48 seconds to make your way from the 1st floor to the 4th. If you keep moving at the same speed, how long will it take you to reach the 8th floor from the 4th? Hint number 1. To solve this puzzle, you must base the time it takes to climb the rest of the way on the amount of time it took to make it to the 4th floor. How many flights of stairs did you climb between the 1st and 4th floors again? Hint 2. Hint number 2. If you start on the first floor, you'll travel through the second, third, and fourth floor stairs before you reach the fourth floor. When you continue on from the fourth floor, you'll have to climb the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth floor stairs before you reach the eighth floor. Hint number three. There are three flights of stairs between the first and fourth floors. Between the, floor, the fourth floor and the eighth floor, you have an additional four flights of stairs to climb. If you got all that, then you just have to do the math. Math and tongue twisters. How the heck can I solve any of these things? It would take you a Super Mario, a 64, and that wasn't a 6 for some reason. It was a 0, and there's a 64. All right, then. You got to speak in Italian, because that guy was, like, all over the place. It's okay to speak of Italian in this, uh, this game filled with the British people. The I don't even know. That's right. Are you going from the first floor to the fourth floor? means you're going to have the stairs. Grazie. Now I'm ready to go back to the village. What a strange fellow. Professor, do you suppose that man is human? I believe so. He's an odd one though, isn't he? I've never seen an explorer with such a poor sense of direction. Stranger still is that he entered St. Mysteria. I don't think he even knows how he did it. Perhaps his presence yesterday was another reason why Bruno felt compelled to hide the crank. Okay, I guess that's one way to shove him into the story. Uh, do we got any sort of hint coins or puzzles lying around? Doesn't look like it. Just got to dust all over for the fingerprints and for the puzzles. There's really nothing in here? Come on, there's got to be something. Well, I guess that guy just give us a puzzle, so... As long as we get one puzzle for, per floor, I guess we're good. And up here, we got another lock, it seems. We'll get to that in a moment. Any sort of hint coins? Doesn't seem so. Or I just missed him again, as usual. It seems that we're faced with another puzzle lock, Luke. Oh, I meant to ask you, but our run-in with the explorer distracted me. How did Simon, you know? All in good time, my boy. First, we need to solve this puzzle here. It looks to be quite the challenge. Puzzle number 97, Princess in a Box 1. And it's a sliding puzzle, hooray! Wait, does the UK have a sliding puzzle for this one, or do they get to skip out on it? No, it's... Wait, what? I don't know. Okay, I guess it's not a different one, but... It says it is... Oh, it just has a different name in the UK version. It's called Maiden's Escape in the UK version. Sure, why not? Alright, then. Uh, so what the heck are we doing? Sliding puzzle, alright, then. You know the drill. Not gonna read the hints, unless they're funny. Uh, let's see... No, it doesn't look like it. All right, then. On to the sliding puzzles. Let's go ahead and put this one here and here and a little bit of here. We got ourselves moving that up here and a like that. And I kind of messed it up already. Oh, no, I won't get the perfect score. So sad. Uh, the red block is the princess, I guess. So just got to get the red block out of here. Let's put that there and there and right there I think that's what they want you to do and this right here uh, this one right here and that and that okay then then start bringing these down to the ground bring these to the side all right then just shimmy in along sorry I don't really have much to talk about when doing these sliding puzzles just got to concentrate and don't mess up. Don't lose your track and all that jazz. Uh, come on. Get over there. I'm, like, holding the DS very stinking strangely. Alright. Do that. And that. 
Hui! All right, then doing this crazy one-handed maneuver. Come on! Oh, balls in the balls. Like fine. Use the stinking stylus like I'm supposed to. Bah! All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, do that and that and that. Okay. Then just slide these around, and you are good to go. There we go. Another puzzle solved. Wonderful! This is a classic example of a sliding puzzle. Yeah, as if you needed to tell us. There we are. The door should open now. Amazing as always, Professor. Now about Simon. What exactly happened in the mansion? Did Don Paolo really mur uh, make off with Simon? I'd say so. This is just my theory, mind you, but I think that Don Paolo followed us into the manor. That's when he met Simon, or came across him at the same as the case may be. I suspect Simon had already collapsed when Don Paolo found his body sprawled out on the floor. Just like with Ramon. So maybe Simon had also stopped functioning properly, huh? I guess all the robots break down sooner or later, and when they do, Bruno comes to collect them. There he fixes them, in then he fixes them here in the basement of the tower. Oh, do you suppose the noises from the tower are actually the sounds of Bruno's machines working? I think you're spot on, Luke. That must be why people began to associate the disappearances with the roaring from the tower. Don't forget that. Despite his peculiar appearance, Don Paolo is a scientific genius. Therefore, he probably realized why Simon had stopped moving. If it weren't for the Golden Apple, Don Paolo likely wouldn't have left St. Mysterio right then. I'm sure he was eager to take the robot apart and learn how it worked. And then he must have made- and then- And that must be when he decided to disguise himself as Inspector Chelney, right? That rat made up the whole murder story on the spot! But that's not the whole mystery. Come, Luke, we must keep moving. I'll explain the rest as we go. And we've solved the mystery of the Rumbling Tower and Ramon. Only three more mysteries to go already, wow. Things are becoming more and more clear to us, even if we're not really the ones solving it. It's still exciting to see where this is gonna lead. What the fruit are you doing here? Oh my god, of all the people to run into. Hey, fancy meeting you here, dearie. How would you like to try a little puzzle I made up? How on earth did she get up here? Hmm, she must have overtaken us at some point. Funny, I didn't even see the old girl pass by. Nyam nyam nyam, quit whispering amongst yourselves and try out my puzzle already. It's a, it's a home dinner. Puzzle number 98, card order. You've placed one joker and four aces with different suits face down on a table. Use the hints Use the hints below to de determine the position for each card. 1. The club is to the immediate right of the heart. 2. Neither the diamond nor the joker is next to the spade. 3. Neither the joker nor the diamond is next to the club. 4. Neither the diamond nor the spade is next to the heart. Hint number 1. If the club is to the immediate right of the heart, the true heart can't be the rightmost card. Neither the diamond nor the spade are next to the heart. You know what the club is to the immediate right of the heart, so the card to the left of the heart is either the joker or the heart is the leftmost card itself. Hint number two. The heart is to the immediate left of the club, and neither the joker nor the diamond are next to the club. So either the club is the rightmost card or the spade lies to the right of it. Don't forget that your diamond heart and joker can't be right next to the spade. Therefore, the spade is the rightmost card, and the club lies to its immediate left. This feels like the episode of Clan Ad when they're reading that Tongue Twister like essay, and it's just like stinking confusing as heck. From hint number three, from earlier hints, you know that from the right side, the cards appear in this order: spade, club, then heart. As for the two remaining cards, you know that the the diamond diamond can't be next to the heart, so the Joker must be the fourth card from the right. The solution is that the diamond would go here, heart would go here, club would go here, spade would go here, and joker would go right here. That should do it. 
Critical thinking is the key to success. Yes, it is, Leighton. Excellent. Only a strong grasp of the principles of logic can you can get you through a puzzle like this or using a guide. <laughs> Oh, yes, that's the answer. All right, well, then I guess I'll be off. Come visit me sometime. Yum, 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 yum. I guess she followed us in here. What do we got in here? We got a whole lot of nothing, a whole lot of nothing. I guess you don't really need hint coins at this point because you got a buttload of them, presumably, and I guess this is the final area of the game, and I just sort of lied about that because I just found a hint coin right there, so I'm not really knowing what I'm talking about at all. Let's keep going. And another lock. We'll get to that in a minute. We see Leighton and Luke right there. Hello, Snarf. Yes, yes, I see you. Uh, let's go over here. No, there's nothing around here. All right, this next puzzle is gonna be a doozy, so let's see what we got. Just like I thought, there's another puzzle locking the door. It looks quite difficult, Professor. Luke, my boy, haven't you learned by now? No puzzle is without an answer. Now we simply need to find that answer. Here, allow me. Puzzle number 99, 333, 33. The long lost descendant of P. Cole 44444. Use each of the numbers 1 through 9 exactly once to fill in the blanks and complete this equation. 0000, zero minus 0000, zero 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 equals 33333. So basically a 5 digit number minus a 4 digit number equals 33333. This is actually, honestly, might be my favorite puzzle in the game. I would always like, uh, give this puzzle to people to solve and it was just like kind of funny to see them try really hard at it and like submit it to teachers or something like that trying to figure out and it was funny that like i would have teachers like help me beat the game for me and they were like really addicted to it because it was all puzzle based and stuff but whatever hint number one at its core this is a simple math problem so you're just gonna have to work it out if you want to solve it however there is a way to cut down the amount of work you need to do try thinking about the first and last digits for each number the leftmost digit in the upper number is four hint number two there are two possible solutions, but some digits are lo are located in the same place for both answers. For example, for both solutions, 7 is the leftmost digit for the bottom number. Hint number 3. This is the last hint you're going to get. Well, yeah, obviously it's hint number 3. For the top number going from the left, the first three digits are 4, 1, and 2. So the solution, there are, like he said, there are two possible solutions. So you could either do 41286 minus 7953, or you could do... Four one whoa four one two six eight and I just realized wait what four one two six eight minus seven nine five three three five three five all right sorry so you could either do four one two eight six minus seven nine five three or you could do 41268 minus 7935. Luke, here's my answer. Another puzzle solved. That's right, there are two correct co uh, configurations possible. Did you manage to figure out both? Uh, sort of. Creativity and perseverance, Luke. As long as you have these, no puzzle is beyond your reach. Professor, I was just thinking, do you remember that picture we found in Lady Dahlia's room? The one with the Baron's late wife, Violet, holding a child who appears to be the young Flora? Of course. Uh, that's the one. It's uncanny how much Lady Violet looked like Lady Dahlia. Do you suppose Baron Reinhold's journal entries were talking about Lady Dahlia? Sharp thinking, my boy. I believe it went something like this. The craftsmanship of it simply re is re simply remarkable. It reminds me of my sweet Violet when she was alive. That's the that's the one that tipped me off. Professor, do you suppose Lady Dahlia is actually a robot built to resemble Lady Violet? That's entirely possible, maybe even probable given the circumstances. But if so, what a terribly sad story these entries tell. Do you remember what the next entry said? Flora doesn't like the thing at all. I've seen her run away from it on multiple occasions. Recently, she spends more time playing by dear Violet's grave than anywhere else. 
I'm sad to say, but I doubt Flora will ever take to it. I can't blame her, as I've changed its memory. I felt terrible forcing that change in Flora, but I just couldn't bear to see it like that anymore. Violet, there can never be another you. You are my first, my last, and my only. The Baron arranged for construction of a robot for Flora that was identical to his late wife. But living with a machine that was so similar to his wife must have been too much for him. Thus, he decided to change the robot's personality, and so Lady Dahlia was created. As she was originally created as a mother figure, she must have gone through a confusing transition. Hmm. Professor, do you suppose these robots feel sadness? Honestly, I'm not quite sure. But I have a feeling that each of the robots has something not unlike a human heart. What do you think? I... I hope that they do. And we solve the mystery of Lady Dahlia. Only two more to go. We're getting closer and closer to the top. Let's keep pushing forward. Looks like we have another blocked entrance way. Nothing along this path. Of course there's a hint coin. Nothing left to do, but to face another lock. Do you suppose we're near the top yet? Yes, but it seems that we have another puzzle in the way before we get there. At last, puzzle number 100, seven squares, even though we've already solved more than 100 puzzles. Your task is to draw lines between the pins on this board to form seven squares. The seven squares do not have to be uniform in size, but you could only use each pin once. Alrighty then, give it a shot. Hint number one, most of the squares you make will be tiled, will be titled 45 or tilted 45 degrees to the side, and their sizes will vary as well. Start by looking for pins you could connect to create squares at a diagonal. Hint number two, you want more specifics? All right, here's the location of one of the squares. Connect the four pins in the top left corner to form a tiny square. Just so you know, this is the only square on the board that isn't tilted. Hint number three. The largest square contains the pins that the third, that's third from the top of the left column, and the bottom pin from the far right column. You also need to form a small diagonal block using the two pins lined up diagonally on the bottom left to portion of the board. There are two more small squares like this one on the board. So the solution, we just gotta make uh, as many squares as we can with only four pins, so we're gonna do that one. Uh, how's about we go with... Uh, this color. I don't really think you need to use different colors just for the sake of making it a bit easier for you to see. A bit easier on the eyes, I suppose. Uh, we do that. Uh, phooey. Well, this one's an obvious one. Uh, we got this one next. Uh, is that right? I feel like that's not right. Alright, that, that looks more right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And there should be two more. Uh... Uh, how about we go for... The Big Mamma Jamma. Which is this one? This one. And there you go. And the last one should... Oh, wait, no, there's two There's two more after this. Oh, I didn't even see that one. Uh, let's see. How about... Uh, wait. I did that one. I'm just getting confused with the colors. There's one, two, three, four, five, six squares. We have one, two, three, four, five so far. That should be it, right? I hope so. Well, no, no, I see one in here, though. So let's make that one real quick. That's correct, right? We used all the dots. I think that's correct. Look, here's my answer. 
All right then. Kind of confusing. I was just like really weirded out because as you see on the solution screen, uh, the colors are different. I'm just like, whoa, what the fruit am I supposed to be doing? Uh, tracking down all the tiled squares or tilted squares is pretty fun, wasn't it? Sure. Now we're free to keep climbing. You know, it's very odd how this tower is simply huge and yet there's almost nothing inside of it. Yes, quite. Other than Bruno's room in the basement, the whole place is rather bare. Perhaps that is why Bruno's machines were making such a racket. This tower is like a giant megaphone. But why would anyone want to construct a big, purposeless tower, Professor? It's exhausting to climb this thing. Ah, did you ever consider that this tower might have been built for the express purpose of exhausting us? That is the another one of those many trials that have been set out for the Seekers of the Golden Apple. Gosh, that makes perfect sense! Maybe that's also why the tower looks so scary on the outside. We have solved puzzle number 100, and we continue getting closer and closer to the top. Let's go. This floor doesn't appear to have any puzzles set up for us, so if we climb this spiral staircase, maybe... He will we'll reach the top floor? I think you might be right, my boy. Come, let's hurry. We gotta climb all the way up there, but thankfully it's just a few clicks away, and hey, Snarf found something for us. A little hint coin, thank you, Snarf. Oh my gosh! Our view was obscured from the ground, but who would have suspected a charming cottage like this up here? Look, the lights are on, Professor! It would appear that someone is living there. And that is the end of chapter 9. All that's left to do is enter that house and find the solution we've been looking for. Next time on Professor Layton and the Curious Village, the finale, we are going to solve the mystery of the Golden Apple. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.